Happy New Year everyone! After taking a small break to recharge our batteries, and since nothing is really happening in the TFT universe, we are back in business. It has been great watching all the announcements slowly trickle and showcasing new champions, but what do we think about all of this? Hey guys, and welcome back to another Pro Guides TFT video. Today we're going to be sharing our thoughts, predictions, and overall outlook on set 4.5 so far. It is definitely a breath of fresh air and sorely needed after a month of the same meta, which has kind of grown stale. We are super hyped for some champions hitting or re-hitting the convergence, as they like to call it, like Swain and Shivana. The hype is real for the new traits as well, as they introduce some interesting physical-oriented comp buffs, which are quite lacking in set 4. We will follow the structure of what we know so far, and comment on each of these changes, sharing our thoughts and predictions about each new thing 2021 TFT has in store for us. Before we dive right on in, I just want to let you guys know that we have a Discord community and a new subreddit that is growing really fast. We have all of you to thank for that, and we want to continue building our community and helping you be a part of it. Make sure you check the link in the description down below. And for our question of the day, how excited are you about set 4.5? Share your hype with us in the comments down below. Traits leaving us. We saw last week that a few traits are leaving us. Let's talk about each one and how they will impact our strategies and what to look for in the game plan. Dusk has been, in most people's mind, the most dominant trait of set 4. It is a really strong all around trait, and there's few places where we feel its impact. First, Dusk was a really good trait to fall back on when going into World Downs Blind. It has strong champions in Rivian and Cassio, and it synergizes really well with other champions like Jin. Second, and as a byproduct of the said strong champions, it was a really strong splash. The Cassio Riven combo, or even Riven Vein for that sharpshooter, was extremely viable, giving 20% spell power to everyone. Having a special item could give any champion in the game a ridiculous amount of personal spell power that was less impactful due to rarity, but still an extremely attractive part of Dusk, giving the trait potential explosive strength. We think Dusk will be missed, but traits like Dragon Salt will definitely fill the gap with strong default units and an overall expansive synergy with other traits. We will see though. Moonlight will not impact the game too much by leaving, outside of us needing to find a new reroll comp. With Vayne leaving us as well, reroll 1 cost comps are gone. We have Chisana coming in as a strong new looking 1 cost, and we will see if she's worth 3 starring in her own sharpshootery Dragon Soul comp or somewhere else. So other than a gap that needs to be filled to that reroll comp department, Moonlight we bid you adieu and nary a heavy heart. Shade is really healthy outside the set. The clash with assassins was real, and we think it limits design a lot, in creating aggro dropping assassin type characters. You can't make them too strong or they'll destroy everything. So they are in a perpetual word state and in the meantime, assassins are forgotten. Shade leading will allow Riot to buff and play around with assassins a little bit more and in a healthier environment than before, without making players feel like they have to play the better of the two. This is especially true for newer players and it will make getting into the game easier. Hunter is really boring and the traits replacing it are not. So that's a win in our book for sure. Hunter was a stable, strong trait throughout the set and almost always had an A or S tier comp. The trait to replace him, it seems to be, in our eyes, Slayer. It's a much more interactive and fun to play and watch trait and it has counterplay, unlike Hunter, which just felt completely extra with just some bonus damage here and there. With Dazzler leaving, we have a second relatively big change to the transition after Dusk. Dazzler may have been a splash trait for the most part, but it was in the direction of messing around with their opponent's stats, which seemed to be leaving to in set 4.5. Statistic and quotation mark traits have been introduced, and only adept is still in the game. In most comps, we will probably be looking at a Siphoner Splashes instead of Dazzler, which was made possible by champions like Swain and Morgana, which can be in multiple comps. They are almost replaced one for one by new traits with a new direction. However, more akin to the set 3-1 of direct, easy to understand traits, that remains interesting. Yeah, Fabled is a little bit weird, but hey, that's the only one. Let's go ahead and talk about champions first though, and then we'll move on to the new traits afterwards. New Champions all the new stuff is coming in. Let's talk about how each of these champions will impact the meta, if they do at all, and how they can be potentially used. Remember, everything is on paper, so predictions you hear now are extremely subject to change. Legendaries Swain is a really interesting new addition and should be the cap of any Dragon Soul comp. He, however, seems quite strong on his own as a legendary and could be seen in 3-piece Dragon Soul splashes along with maybe Irelian and Morgana. It will be quite interesting to even use Swain as just a siphoner, if he's strong enough itemized. As a first look, Warmog seemed to be quite good on him, along with more tank and tankish AP items. 
Orn is my favorite legendary coming in. Essentially a more nuanced and far-reaching cane, his artifacts will be very exciting to use and micromanage. He adds some sort of long-term planning ability that you kind of sort of had to do with Kane, but is much more passive and the choice wasn't really a choice. His items have not been available yet, and he could also be a bit on the weaker side, so that one star Orn doesn't explode your potential too much once you get him on level 8. Samara is amazing, less exciting than Orn, but the ramp up mechanic she introduces is definitely pretty exciting. The last ramp up we had, Duelist, is not as visible and not really applicable either outside of Yasuo and Jax. Hopefully Samara's ramp up is more exciting to watch, and if you include Sharpshooter in the mix, ouch. We expect to see her as a carry in many comps, as she is fairly plug and playable. You will almost always want to have a Slayer activated with her though, in order to keep her in the frame. In a Slayer slash Sharpshooter comp, she is definitely the capstone carry, and you have something like Trisana or maybe Zed carry items for her. For costs and Rakan. We spoke about Aurelian a little bit, and he is quite versatile. Being a mage, he can completely forgo his Dragon Soul nature for a mage heavy comp, or just have a Pod Fury comp, since both his traits have spatula items. A mage Dragon Soul comp with Cypherner sounds pretty dirty, especially if Swain's ability ends up working with mage. We have high hopes for Aurelian, and hopefully he answers them. Olaf is really straightforward, another strong attack speed oriented rapid fire cannon user, probably. He clashes a bit with Aurelian Soul's theme, so in Dragon Soul comps, we will probably see one or the other being picked, especially if you have a chosen Dragon Soul. They will only pair up if you go for the chase trait. For more physical oriented Dragon Soul comp, you go Olaf and for magical, you go Irelian. This should be the plan. Zaya is my new favorite forecast. Besides being a triple trait user, always fun, she is executioner and keeper on top of Elderwood, which gives a touch point for Elderwood and keeper to have on your comp, gives a solid carry for keeper, which lacked one, and executioner is just juicy and a really exciting potential chosen option. Kale is a new Warwick, and that's about it. She's potentially stronger due to Divine compared to her set 3 days, but there's not much to say about her. She will mostly definitely have a comp, probably centered around Divine, with Spirit maybe coming back to buff her attack speed where Chrono was in set 3. Togath is a mystery to us, due to Fabled being a mystery to us. A frontliner brawler with probably the same spell as set 3, he'll be the strong CC many comps seem to be lacking in the front. Paired with Sejuani, it could potentially be a lot of people's stun. Chindamir, last but not least, is another carry, hopefully a better Shin Zhao. He is in the 4 cost slot, which Duelists really needed to get out of other Yasuo reroll only comps. Him being a Slayer and a Warlord explodes the potential for interplay between the three traits, all of which could be using him as a carry. The main thing that he brings though, is definitely the introduction of a strong physical damage carry to Warlords, potentially making him more viable. 3 cost. Sivir is just there to replace Jin as the less strong sharpshooter since they gained a legendary in Samara. It's safe to say Cultus will no longer carry the sharpshooter unless Sivir is really strong and possibly go into duelist with Kalista. Saphir with Swain and Vladimir or most likely Keeper with Zaya carry. Shivana comes in strong but brawlers are traditionally pretty boring. So with an earlier potential carry, brawlers could be picked up in a comp or a splash. She could potentially be a strong mid game chosen as well but we'll see. The new mystic Nico is lower than Cassiopeia, the 3 cost, and hopefully her fabled ability is super fun. There's not much else that we could say about this, we expect fabled to be really interesting in Splash, like Astro was in set 3, or Flop, depending on balance. Darius is back, Who boy, <laughs> let me tell ya, please let him keep his set 3 ultimate so that him and Talon can be in the same comp. <laughs> that would be really atrocious. I mean, all jokes aside, due to Talon, Darius might have a different spell, but Fortune might just become a lot more melee. A Slayer Fortune comp is more explosive than Sharpshooter, and could potentially be stronger in the early game, where Fortune is the most valuable. 2 cost. Braum and Nautilus are your standard new vanguards, potentially and probably with the same abilities that they've always had, the wall and the stun. Still, we can't wait to see what fabled ability Nautilus will have, and Braum Chosen might be a really strong early game pick to start working on Dragon Soul with the strong and difficult to kill frontliner. He'll fall off hard, like Thresh used to, but it will be interesting in the early game. Vladimir is the new cultist low cost, and depending on his spell, he could be quite strong in the early game. We expect to see him quite a bit in the divine cultist siphoner early game combos, but siphoner will most likely be a chosen or two piece trait in the late game with Morgana and Swain. If he is a decent item carry, we can see him carrying Swain's items. One cost. Nasus is a deceptive unit. If he keeps his ultimate in league as his spell, he will be a huge bruiser healer in the early game, especially as a chosen. 
but will get totally destroyed by Morello or Sunfire. Brand could be a cool new chosen for early Dragon Soul Mage comps, potentially working towards Aurelian Soul. Again, if his spell is good, he could be an item carry for Aurelian. Tristana could be the new reroll sharpshooter option, like she was in set 1 with Gunslingers. If chosen, there might be options for Dragon Soul sharpshooters, the damage potential is ridiculous, and there's two legendaries that could complement this comp. Okay, that's it for the champions. Time to share some predictions and thoughts about how all this info could change the way that we play. Predictions and thoughts. Overall, the set is seeing a bigger change than set 3.5 brought to set 3. Riot is overhauling a lot of things, and we expect the first month of Festival of Beasts to be a balancing act for the most part. It might take even longer as people keep finding new OP comps to play. As usual, in the beginning, you can expect a lot of people to experiment a lot more. So the new traits will be played a lot, often irregardless of strength. All the new ones have been made and have decent synergy between them to allow for new combinations amongst them, lessening the difficulty in finding new synergies with existing comps. A way to do exactly that so that you're ahead in the curve is to look at the list of new champions and check their non 4.5 traits. A good example is Zaya, who is a keeper. Pun intended. Man, if she was real, and I guess not married to Rakan. As a keeper, with the absence of a carry for cultists, she can fill a slot where Jin used to be. The same can be said for her in Elderwood, as she replaces Ash in that comp, but that's fairly obvious. A really interesting thing about Festival of Beasts is that there's so much healing, and that's without seeing the character abilities. Imagine if Nico or Swain have healing in their kits as well. Morales was already an S tier item, so that's great, but Sunfire will most likely be a top pick in the beginning of the set, where everyone is playing the new stuff to deter healing as much as possible. Katarina might also be really cool in that meta if she manages to get her ultimate off. Kidra will also be the beast that she already is in the early game, especially if you get her chosen later on. As for comps, we expect the following to be strong at first glance and we'll keep playing them on the PBE. Divine Executioner Spirit Kale Carry any splashes might include Keeper, and if you have no chosen Executioner or Mystic, if you go for Spirit with Yumi. Slayer Sharpshooter will definitely be a thing later on, as it is an obviously strong comp on paper and depends on tuning as for its real strength. Dragon Soul Mage and Dragon Soul Slayer are both comps I want to check out, focusing on Aurelian and Olaf, then have Swain come in as a cherry on top. Warlords with new Trinimer, as well as Slayer and Duelist splashes to buff him up as much as possible. Finally, we want to try out some Brawler options, using Shivana as a carry or set item holder with Fabled in it if it turns out to be good. A tanky bruiser comp with Mystic for Nico should be pretty fun. The same could be said for a Vanguard Fabled comp, but Cho'Gath being the higher cost feels like the better option to go for Brawlers. And that's all we can think of for now. As PBE rolls out, we'll dive in and keep finding more stuff for you guys. We are so excited for set 4.5 and we'll keep it up. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Let us know in the comments if you have any feedback or questions and have a wonderful 2021. If you want to get better at TFT, visit ProGuides.com where you can find a challenger coach to help you reach your dream rank. With all that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.